Hello, in this video I will show you how to add colors to PLY files. So this is not a standalone video, it will start from where the, my other video on how to write a PLY file uh, left off. So if you haven't seen it or if you don't know how to write a PLY file, I'll leave the link to that video in the description of this one. Or you can just take a look in the utilities playlist on my channel. As I said, I won't go over writing the script for the format, uh, but I want to first show you this website from Paul Burke. .net, sorry if I uh, don't pronounce your name correctly. He has a database on how to take geometries into a bunch of file extensions. And yeah, he has them listed, all, all of them here. And the one that we're going to look at today is PLY file right here. So he has a very good in-depth explanation of what's going on in the PLY file. As I said before, I'm not going to go over that. I just want to make a quick summary. So if you scroll down here, this is what a PLY should look like without colors. You're going to first have a header, which is this whole block of text. You start with the three letters P, L, Y, then you specify the format for, in our case, going to be ASCII 1.0. Then you can add a comment, typing comment and adding whatever you want. Now, PLY files have two types of elements that I know of. The first one is a, a vertex and the other one is faces. So you start with vertex, you tell the program how many uh, vertices your geometry has. Then uh, you specify the properties for this element. So since the vertices are going to be specified by three numbers, which are the X, Y, and Z coordinates, you specify property float X and float just means that the coordinates are going to be in floating numbers. So we're going to have decimal points. Then you move to the next element, which is the faces. You list how many faces your geometry has and the faces are listed by integers. And these integers are the indices of the vertices making that face so you uh, write this property list u char int vertex index and then you end, end the header with m header the first three column block of numbers are the x y and z coordinates for the vertices the other one uh, this one could be either four or five column block of numbers for triangles or quadrilaterals depending on the faces that you want if you want triangles you just add threes for the first column and if you want quadrilaterals just, just add four and if you scroll down you will find out how to add colors so it is very simple you just add the property to either vertices or faces inside the header as you can see here they add to both vertices here and the faces here the way that you do that is that you add a new property uh, called u char red green and blue and as you can see here in the in the blocks of numbers where they list the vertices now you have three more columns now the first column is going to be for r the second column is going to be for g and the next column is going to be for b rgb right then you specify the index color and just put them next to the vertex that you want to paint as with that color. Same thing with the faces. Um, yeah, and you have a lot of other things that I'm not going to go over today. Before going to MATLAB, I want to just give you a quick note on uh, colors. So RGB stands for red, green, and blue, and they are indices to specify any color that you want. So you can select any color with the correct value for each. As you can see here, you have RGB, right? So if I scroll this thing up or down, you see that the numbers change. So if I want, if I want a yellow, I will have to have the index 0, 255, in 247 right but let's say that i want just red so i will have r which is red right makes sense is going to have 255 which is the maximum index that you can have and the other ones are going to be zero which is the lowest index that you can have let's go to matlab this is the exact same code that I that we did on the PLY video so if you want to just pause the video and copy it is uh, right here i'm going to scroll this very very slowly Okay, so you can write the colors anywhere you want. All you have to do is create a new array that is going to be three columns, right? By, and the rows is going to be equal to either the number of vertices or faces that you that you uh, have, depending on which of those two elements you want to color. So I am going to do that right after the variable number facets because I want to do uh, facets coloring and I'm going to need the number of facets that, that I have. So. I'm going to create a new RGB. And I'm going to just make a number with of zeros for now, which is going to be three col. Uh, I'm sorry, not three columns wrong. It's going to be number of facets and then three. So this should give me um, an array that is number of facets by three. Let's specify the color. So let's say that I want to paint the whole thing red and I forgot what we're doing. So sphere, so we're doing a sphere. Let's say I want a red sphere. First, let's define the, the, the color array, which is going to be 255, which is the maximum number. Then a vector of ones, which we're going to multiply by that 255. It's going to be one the number of facets and that transposed. Now we take our RGB array and we place it on the very first column. 
so we replace the first column with the color vector that we just created and that should and that should specify that we want a red color for the sphere now remember that we also have to add the text in the header that specifies the property the color property for either the vertices or the facets in this case the facets so what i will do is just go here all right yes there and then i'm going to print there's a fprint function to print on output which is the id for the file where we're writing all these things and it's going to be so it's going to be property u char red and new line but instead of writing another fprint all i'm going to do is copy this and just paste it after it because this new line is just going to automatically start printing whatever's after it in a new line so i don't have to print it three times i can do that in the same line and all i have to do is to change this to green and blue. Then I add this at the end. Looking at these we're going to have ele element vertices, then the properties for the vertices, then the faces, color properties for the faces, and then the indices for the faces. Okay, so we go to the for loop and we add another f print. This time we're going to write the values for the colors face uh, by face. They're going to be done after the indices specifying for the vertices so we need to erase this new line because we want to add after this line but remember to add a, a space here is important we can copy this here because the color values are also integers so we can delete that and here add a new line and then we add rgb i and all the rows okay and we do this and i believe that's it let's run this to see if it worked let's try to open it i know that meshlab and matlab can read not matlab blender can read colors from PLY files so let's see okay so quick note before recording this video i was testing the code if it would work with colors in two things here if you copied the code pause in the video you need to add a backslash in an n because otherwise everything is going to be printed on the same line and it's not going to work and the other thing is that this line right here where you specify the colors has to go af after the indices where you specify the indices for the faces and then should work so you have here the the vertices right and then the colors here you have the four columns for the faces and then you have the index so let's go to meshlab and open it in meshlab yeah you can see that it works so red sphere well if you go to blender this is what's going to load when you import the PLY file and you will see that your sphere is uh, all gray and that is because I don't know if blender can do this but I haven't found a way to make it read when you paint on faces it can do when you paint on vertices but not on faces so that's what we're going to try right now to, with the code to see if we can paint the the vertices going back to matlab first copy remove this line from here and paste it after the x y and c properties for the vertices remove this line from here and paste it in the vertex loop remove the backslash line and replace it with a space here add a back, backslash n and here let's change it to number vertex number vertex 2 okay okay everything is looking fine and running this now opening the sphere again, you go to object mode and vertex paint and you should see now that it is a red sphere. Let's try now with, I don't know, blue or green. So if we want a green color for our sphere, then we need to change here for, instead of the first column, the second column. And if we want blue, then for the third column. I want blue, I like blue, so let's try with that one. And a blue sphere, beautiful. Now let's try with this little uh, code that I write. It's going to take the color from all the way black to all the way red, or in this case, I think it's blue too. No, let's try with green. We haven't tried with green, so green. And let's run this. Yeah, so you can see right now we have a green sphere and it starts from black and works all the way up to green. Yeah, so this is another script that I wrote. This is going to take all the colors and put them on the sphere. So let's run this. Yeah, there you go. You can see, beautiful. Although I don't see much green. Hmm. Yeah, anyway, um, that's how you add colors to PLY files. It's very, very simple. Just in summary, um, just remember which element you want to paint, either faces or vertices. That depends where this line is going to be, either after X, Y, and Z property for vertices or after the integer property for the faces. 
and then also remember to add this line that is going to print the columns for, for the colors either after the vertices or after the facets delete the backslash in here so you keep writing on the same line and add an, a space instead and then if you switch from one to another remember to add a backslash in to the to the one you, where you are not painting so yeah i hope that this video was helpful to you check the other videos if you are interested in the description you can also find a link to help the Ukrainians on the difficult times that they're going through. The, I'm sharing the official links shared by the Ukrainian official Twitter account, but nevertheless, make your own research. I'm not sponsored by any of those links, but I just feel like if I should help in any way, make sure to check that.